This morning uh, I talked about axioms and how they can advance the cause of testing. Uh, and it's, it's a, uh, an experiment in some ways, but it's, it's my proposed way of establishing a set of thinking tools for people in the testing business who can use those um, thought processes to do better uh, software testing in terms of test strategy, in terms of uh, identifying skills that all testers should have, uh, and also how to do uh, test process improvement. And one of the things I introduced in the talk was an idea called uh, quantum testing, which sounds kind of highly mathematical and uh, you know, atomic physics kind of thing. And it's a bit of a fun really, item, really. But just let me explain what I was meaning by that. Uh, the idea of quantum testing is that when we run a test, a test passes or fails, and at one level it gives us a yes or no answer, a Boolean, you know, zero or one, whichever way you look at it. Uh, so in my, my proposal is that we should regard tests at one level as having a significance, i.e. they are passing or failing, and that pass, pass or failure is significant in some way to uh, uh, stakeholders. So let me just tell the story a little for a little moment. Uh, testing builds confidence by uh, tests passing over a course of time where stakeholders observe and witness tests maybe uh, and they see passes and as passes you know, uh, occur their confidence kind of increases. So you could argue that all we need to do is count tests and count test passes and then therefore we have a measure, maybe an indirect measure of confidence. Well I'm not suggesting that but uh, could we think a bit more carefully about the meaning of what passes and fails are and the significance of tests. Let me explain what I mean about quantum testing. The value of a test varies uh, by many things. Okay? One could be uh, the nature of the coverage model we are using. So we could use a, a model which might be lines of code, statements in, in software. And a single test could cover five statements or 5,000 or 50,000 statements of code. So how do you judge the relative value of those tests? In the same way, um, the objective of a test might be to demonstrate a very small, insignificant feature uh, works, or it could be a demonstration of the first end-to-end, straight-through processing activity of a very large banking system. How do you measure that? It's a test, but is it? what's the significance of, the, of, of both of these things? The value is dramatically different. So all the impacts on the value and the influences on the value of tests uh, are completely out of our control and we can't really measure uh, value in that way. Only stakeholders can make that judgment. So if the, 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 the proposal I have is that if a stakeholder can assign a value to the test, this is a very hard thing to do, but what I, what I do know is that people can usually judge the relative value. So I've introduced an idea called the uh, testing theory of relativity. Heavens, let's, let's move on. But, but the idea is we do know the, de the relative values of things, but we don't know the absolute values. So that's kind of where we're at. Now, only stakeholders can make those judgments, but a tester can talk about significance. And let me explain what I mean by significance. Um, a test is, sig is significant to stakeholders if it can be related to a meaningful test objective a goal, a risk, a piece of functionality working, and so on. Um, it's significant if it increases coverage with respect to a meaningful test model agreed with the stakeholders that they recognize, understand, that has meaning to them. Okay. Uh, finally, if a, a, a test is significant if it contributes in some way to the information used by stakeholders to make an acceptance decision. Now, an acceptance decision could be the final go-live uh, discussion and decision towards the end of a project, but it could be to accept a, a component into a component library. It could be a decision made by a development team. Okay. So significance is a Boolean, if you like. It could be a zero or one, yes or no, pass, fail, if you like. Uh, clearly, the number of insignificant tests should be zero because a test that has no significance can be disregarded. It has no value. So how do we assess significance? We need to consider significance in terms of our test objectives, models, the coverage goals that are meaningful to stakeholders. Testers are authorized to create their own objectives, measures, or coverage goals. Uh, that is, uh, significance can be assessed by testers if you have autonomy and the trust of stakeholders to al uh, allow testers to make those judgments on their behalf. 
But in, in order to do this, you need a close, trusting relationship with stakeholders, and you need a kind of authorised autonomy to, to behave this way. And there's nothing wrong with that, it's just that you need that trust before you can proceed safely. I really don't suggest testers go in alone and make these judgments without reference to what stakeholders need, stakeholder needs are. So, let me ask, you know, what is the significance of significance? <laughs> um, Test coverage models and goals that generate uniform distributions of tests, the traditional test design techniques, example of which, are kind of inefficient and uninformative. In that, what they do is they generate a uniformly distributed set of tests. They cover stuff that is less important as well as more important. Now, these models are, are valuable, but we need other models. We need, we need uh, models which allow testers to have coherent conversations with stakeholders in business language to allow business people to make uh, informed judgments about what they need to do in the, in the context of stages in their projects, whether those projects are very large or very small. It's the same de decision-making process. Significance varies with context, and the tests in one uh, uh, project and context could easily be uh, uh, their value could easily change and their significance can easily change over time. So witness the use of tests as regression tests. Regression testing takes place in a different context than the tests uh, that the, when they were initially created for the functional testing of new, new, new software. So I would like to say that you know, how much testing is enough, the big question that we all have is it can't be answered by coverage alone. Okay? We need models that inform the decision making. So significance is about significance with respect to making decisions. Uh, significance is, uh, could be a set of booleans, you know, yes, no's. Okay, so we could make a collection of tests and uh, those, the uh, completion and the success of all those tests could contribute to a decision that a goal has been met or that a risk has been addressed to the degree it's been informed and reassessed and the risk is, is reduced. So typical kind of goals are things like end-to-end uh, um, -end or straight-through processing in uh, an ERP system, okay, which is a major achievement in most large projects doing ERP. Uh, it could be that, well, we can now capture customer orders or we can collect money or drive payments or our financial recon reconciliations can now be done without failure. It's for the business to put the value against these goals. It's for the tester to um, report that the contributory quantum tests pass and that that goal has been achieved from the point of view of the evidence that we can collect today. Now I could say that where does this uh, value come from? Well uh, it's really quite hard to put a value on, 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 on the outcome of these things but one obvious place to look is the business case that was used to justify the project in the first place. Okay, so to close, in terms of a mathematical treatment of testing, we are a long, long way off. Okay? It could be compared to the, our understanding of heat and energy in the 18th century. Well, that far off. But what comes first is that mathematical formula, uh, maybe axioms, maybe uh, inferences from, from, from collections of data, the theories can be derived long before we can do measurement to the degree that we can prove these things work. Okay? So where we're at right now is that we can experience the heat of uh, high risk and goals being met, but we don't know how to measure these things with any certainty. Maybe that day will come. Right now, I think quantum testing helps us to understand that stakeholders judge value and testers judge significance. Mm -hmm.